Hey, hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Miyogi. Um, you've all wanted this. You all demanded this. You all requested this. Well, most of you did. Um, what I'm trying to bring out is, is finally time. You're seeing the opening promotional logos. You know what this game is, so I'm not gonna keep you asking for long. But before anything else, let us once again relive this wonderful opening intro. It is one of the best and it captures the full essence of this game. If you don't know what this game is, you will find out in a moment. But for those who do, draw, let your jaws drop at the amazing cinematography of this, which was done by the way back in the 2000s era. And it's still a wonderful sight to behold up to this year of 2019. Are you with by that amazing intro? Because you know I am. <laughs> okay, so welcome one and all to Tokyo Extreme Racer 3. This is one of the best racing titles back in the PS2 era. And I'm gonna lie, they were not wrong. I'm not gonna lie, they were not wrong. This is one of the best. So we're gonna go on with a new game, a fresh start to this entire series, to this entire let's play. And this is gonna take a long while, I will admit. And because of my busy schedule, other than the fact that I'll be looking for a job soon again, I might not actually have that moment to um, play this. So let's enjoy it weekly. If you do not know your TXR lore, this happens right after TXR Zero, a few years after. It gets intense now that Naga and Osaka are part of the fray according to the story. But right now, let us pick our very first vehicle! We're gonna go from the bottom up and see each one for all it's worth. So we got an AE Hachiroku Levin, the 8611, and its twin brother, the Truana. This is, by the way, if I'm right, a uh, Zeng... a Koki model? Yeah, this is the Koki model, the newer one. Well, the 11 was the Zenki, the older version. We have the Mark II Grande IRV, which is one of the top two strongest horsepowered cars in the game. Next to the Chaser. Well, when I say by the game, I meant at the opening. So there's the Chaser, there's the Mark II. For Subaru, sadly we only got an Acleo and we don't get an Impreza right off the bat in the beginning. If there was, that's already a game breaker. Um, this is not the SVX, that's what you can see maximum tune. This was the predecessor, the very first Acleon. Alkion. Alkion. It's so hard to pronounce. Um, then Nissan, we're gonna be right back here, cause you know me, Nissan Junkie. Uh, vehicles that we got here, we have the Sephiro Cruising. The 180SX, this is the newer model. We have the S13. If I'm right, this is a 93 model, correct me if I'm wrong. 
Um, this is the S14 Zenki. Oh, this is S14 Koki Sylvia. The CS14. The better looking one. The more handsome one. Which we're gonna be getting in a moment. And I know, despite its hefty price tag, I will justify my reasons later. Which I won't. Also, we've got the Z31 Fair Lady Z. If you know your Wangan Midnight Lord, this was used by Harada. Um, and of course, our main character boy, Akio, Akio Asakura. No, we are not gonna do a Devil Z playthrough if that's what you're demanding, that's what you're requesting. Probably somewhere along the lines if the game's requirements call for it, but now at the beginning, we're not. Let's check out with Mitsubishi. We got the Lancer, the Non-Evo, the EX GSR Intercooler Turbo, and the FTO GP version R. Which surprisingly, this is the only game which has licensed vehicles in a Wangan environment that supports front-wheel drive. Well, two of them actually, but we'll get back to the other one later. Uh, we have the FC RX-7. We got the NB Roadster. This is a surprise. Because um, normally, you only get the NA, which right now is also part of the Maximum Tune lineup. Um, the FC RX-7 is another good contender. And then there's the Isuzu Piazza. Which looks similar to an Audi Quattro, um, the one used in the Group B, well, then you see the back and I take it all back. Um, let's start off, let's start things off with the S14. The Koki leaves a special place in my heart for a lot of reasons. If you've been following my story, at least the web series, you know what I'm talking about. Here we can customize our plate number, we can register any number that we like. Um, that has actually a purpose later down the line. We're gonna get back to it when the time calls for it. Now we have um, our starting point. By the way, for our starting point, the place that we start with is the place that we're stuck with for the rest of the first part of this game. We got Tokyo, which I would dub as the easiest because uh, there's something about the AI that makes me laugh, which is gonna play in your favor. Then there's Osaka, which is the normal difficulty, and then there's Nagoya, which is the hardest. Right now, I'm throwing all my bets to Nagoya. It's not because I like Nagoya, I like Tokyo more, if you ask me. It's just that there's a certain vehicle that I want, and the easiest way to unlock it early is to play at Nagoya. And since we have 4,000 left, let us... Um, back then when I was doing test playthroughs of this, before this actual playthrough itself, I was too um, ignorant and focused on form. But right now, we're gonna go with function. And by function, the first thing that you always need to replace if you're going for street race is, well, the tires. We are gonna get high grip tires. And now we're out of money. That's how expensive it is. Um, it's actually a good representation, a simulation of how tuning goes back in Japan. And I think it continues on to this day. Um, you don't just easily you get this car and you got this capital. I mean, if you're starting out with just 40k and you're down to zero, that says a lot. Um, let's get this out of the way first. It's so imperialistic, I'm getting Nobunaga vibes from this. And here we are, we're introduced to the top two strongest teams that we're gonna aim for to beat, Genesis R and Seeks. The battle which all would bet their pride would plunge Naga into a turbulent age. It's so dramatic that sometimes you may cringe. Well, that's most of us. Okay, so welcome to our first drop point, Nagoya Speedway, Speed Ring. On that note, give me a second here, guys. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, our first rival is .com. And jumping straight into a battle without explaining what the hell is going on here, but I will like be explaining it as we speak at this point. Okay, so Tokyo Extreme Racer is one of the very first titles in a racing franchise to make use of a system called the SP, the Spirit Battle, the SP Battle. 
SP battles are basically, um, you know like how those fighting games work? Like, you have an HP bar, the other guy has an HP bar, and your aim is to drain the other guy's HP bar. That basically plays the same here, but this time with cars. Um, the main point is to end the race. How to end the race is to drop the enemy's HP bar to the lowest point as you can. By gaining some distance, attacking the person. Yes, I mean it, attacking the person. I am not kidding. And of course, grinding the walls to lose HP or SP. Okay, right now I got dot com's uh, HP bar to half. And to end the race, you just simply have to drain it down to zero. Um, if you leave at least a, a sliver of HP left in the person, it's gonna it's gonna drag the race so long and. I'm gonna get to that detail in a moment as you can see in the numbers on the lower left. Uh, that has a reason for it, why you want your battles to be quick and immediate to finish. The numbers you see there, they're your water and oil temperatures. You gotta make sure they don't go past when it goes red, because when it goes red, oh, 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 oh boy, <laughs> things go bad for you, I mean it. Um, how bad? Um, what I could say is that whenever, you know, think about it like you're in an actual car. What happens when your car overheats? Other than the fact that you panic. Your car is bound to break, and when something breaks, you lose out on a lot of stuff. For performance cars like this, it means you lose out on a lot of power. You do not want that. So that's where the tuning comes in. But before anything else, oh wait, are, are we going to do this? Do you got this is a suicide mission, but I'll do it anyway. Against 15 knights, and we're facing off as an M against an MR2 right away. Now you see why I said Nagoya is the hardest difficulty as a starter if you're not in a Toyota Chaser or a Mach 2 Grande. Because uh, 15 knights is in an SW20, the MR2. And the game only offers it as the GTS trim. The GTS trim boasts 250 hers purse, and well, you don't want those hers purse to bite you in the ass. So I have to sacrifice some of my HP just to block him off my way. And good. The, okay, remember what I said earlier on the, what's the basis of the, of the difficulties because of the AI. The AI, okay, everything, the only two things that Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 did not get right is one, the battle music, well, not all of it, most of it, actually, and two, oh my god, no, 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 the second one being its AI, the AI is tragic in more bad ways than one, and thank you for being incompetent, okay. So that was our second win. That was actually hella suicidal. Um, I think we can go for one more. And yeah, don't worry, we are going to dress this boy up. Um, I think with one more we can actually do that. And when we dress it up, we're gonna call it an episode. So hopefully three or four battles. And you can see on the minimap right there on the side, um, it lets us know who, uh, how many rivals we have left. If it's green, we've beaten them already. If it's uh, blue, we have it. If it's red, uh, please hope that does not happen. Um, if it's red, I think that is a boss. I could be wrong. But if it's pink, you lost to the guy. So it's basically rematching. Square Lunch is in a starlet. Uh, the Glanza V, which by the way is front wheel drive. When I mentioned the FTO earlier, yep, this game has front wheel drive support. It does not, they don't have four wheel drive um, conversions or the like. But first, okay. We're on high grip tires, so we can clear this much better. Oh, he's actually much more careful than the other guys of his team. Okay. Hopefully this will be easy, and 
hopefully he... Okay, he's not dumb. He did not hit the high ace. He's slow, but at least he's smart. That's a, um, a saving grace for score lunch right there. Now, it's gonna be only scary if he goes past 150 in a starlet and actually passes me. Because that's what he's about to do right this moment. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Square lunch. No, you don't. He's actually keeping up. We're hitting 150. Oh, by the way, we are just in power bone stuff. And 150 miles an hour is actually something to boast with. That's how much power we can actually gain out of this. And thank God. 2,850. That merits us at least a good set of wheels. If we actually win the next one, we got around 4,000. A little bit past 4,000. Okay. Let's go balls to the walls with this. Let's see if we could beat one more. And hopefully it's not the boss battle right after that one. Okay, so we basically traveled 10. I hope this is miles. Um, we already traveled 10 miles according to our trip meter. Oh no no wait, that's just wait, that's just a that's just a mile. We've just hit a mile. My god, or that's just a kilometer. I doubt it's a kilometer. Okay, just one more target. One more. As a pilot episode, we should at least hit 20 minutes in this one. Uh, okay, I'm getting some body roll. Oh my god! Oh my god! A Lexus right off the bat! Wait, do we have Lexuses in the game? Yeah, it does say Lexus on the side! This is bad. Yeah, there is no way out. We can potentially lose this match. And I've only let him do something stupid. This one's on high power. I really feel we're going to lose this one this one match. I didn't mean to drift there. Great. Uh, the, uh, we gotta be extra careful. And this is Nagoya. The power is overwhelming with no way out. We re There's really no way out of this. Oh, is he breaking in a straight road? Boy, why are you breaking on a straight road? Well, at least it gives us a bit of an advantage. No, okay, lesson learned. We cannot face no way out or anyone of this caliber. We gotta end this quickly. Yeah. Okay, control the drift, control the drift. This is one big boy. Ow. And hopefully this big boy learns how to slow down completely. Because I am not... Ah! I am not gonna let this big boy slide in. You better lower your speed there, no way out. Oh no, we are hitting a hundred. A hundred degrees Celsius, this is bad. Now hit something! I dare you! I double dare you! Yeah, we, we just gotta grind it all the way. It's the only way out. It is the only way out. And I think that is the cue for us to actually cut it here. Because we have exactly hit 20 minutes on the dot. And... Okay. It was a bad idea, and we've just hit 100 degrees in our oil temperature. That is bad. That is hella bad. 
But it is- Oh, Mythic Newcomer. Okay, that is our bad name type. The bad name is actually a good gimmick for the game, and I might explain that more in the next episode. But oh my god, thank god. Before anything else, before anything else, we are saving. We are saving! I had to do that. I'm sorry, but I had to do that. Okay. That out of the way. Let's dress our boy up. Uh, let's get some good wheels first. Let's let's make him more handsome. The Yokohamas, um, they're only available in bronze. Does NK have anything good? Yeah, I think NK has something good. We're gonna get these. Wait, what? I was at 4,000 earlier. Don't tell me those cost 3k! Oh boy. Oh wait, um, please tell me it's less than 2,000. Okay, arrow. Can we get the wing? Can we get the wing? No! We can't get the wing! We spend it! We spend it on Nikes! We spend it on Wardos! This is a bad idea. But, okay. Uh, rants aside. Wait, what about the grill? Ooh. Oh, no! It's still more expensive! Come on! Anyway, and at least uh, aesthetically to a to an extent, our Sylvia looks a little better. Um, but I guess that's where we're gonna cut episode 1 of Tokyo Extreme Racer. Whew, that last match though was a bit intense. I'm not gonna lie. But I'm, I'm sure you guys are entertained by me panicking. But yeah. Anyway. We're gonna continue on on Nagoya. And hopefully I will get my Wanderer's Guide out and ready. Because, uh, like... It, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier in the game on our playthrough at the beginning, but the reason why I went Nagi is because we want to get a 350Z. This one is just a placeholder car. Our entire gameplay is gonna rest on the 350Z as soon as we unlock it. Which might be what we're going to do on the next episode. So if you like this video, don't forget to share it by the way to everyone that you know, love and hate. Um, like, share, comment on how hyped you are now that I'm covering Tokyo Extreme Racer 3 at last. And subscribe if you're still new to the channel. And follow, uh, follow me on all social media, my Facebook page. Um, I'll leave the links in the description for, on my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Twitter. And of course here, I might do some occasional posts as well on the community postings on YouTube. And I'll see you guys in the next part.